Hi, welcome everyone to the Social Media Marketing 101 webinar. My name is Adrian Leffler, and I'm one of the partners here with My Social Practice. And uh, I'm excited to speak with you all today and teach you a little bit about social media. Um, there are a few things that I want to talk about in the in the webinar. Uh, as an outline, we're going to go over what is social media marketing, how is it done in a dental practice, and what are the benefits. And then at the end of the, uh, the webinar, I'll, I'll do a Q&A. On your screen there, you'll see that um, you, can, you can type in questions. Don't, don't wait until the end of the webinar to, to uh, ask any questions. Just go ahead and type them in as we go, and then uh, I'll, they'll archive on my end, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through them at the end. So let's just go ahead and get started. First of all, what is social media marketing? Um, social media marketing is word of mouth online. It's the way that I describe it best to um, the dental offices that I talk to is that it's basically taking your internal marketing system and you're, you're putting it online. So it's really about getting referrals. It's not about you know, getting your website to rank higher in Google. That would be search marketing it's not, or Yahoo or Bing. It's really about getting your patients and their, your patients' friends and family members to talk about you in a positive manner, which will then generate referrals, build your practice brand, and so forth. Um, according to the word of mouth marketing agency, WOMA, uh, the most influential element driving purchase decisions today is word of mouth. And I think you could probably corroborate that with uh, the types of referrals and new patients that you, or excuse me, the types of patients that you get in that referral patients are typically stronger patients. You already have a, a relationship of trust when they come into the office, typically spend more, and, and so forth. So referrals are a great way to, um, or the best, probably the best type of, uh, of uh, new patient you can get, which comes from word of mouth marketing. Chris Brogan is one of the leading marketing minds out there, and he said, marketing has changed. Today, marketing is about engaging with communities and delivering products and services with stories that spread. So what is the fundamental difference between traditional marketing and social media marketing? Well, we, we see this as a push versus pull relationship. Traditional marketing uses push tactics such, such as direct mail and television commercials and so forth. So if you're, if you're driving down the freeway and you see a billboard, the billboard, the purpose of the billboard is to interrupt your attention so that the company that paid for that billboard is, is basically trying to push their message out, They're trying to get, you know, just interrupt your attention so that you'll hopefully remember them at some point. Well, social media marketing uses a pull tactic based on behavior to engage when and how people want to engage. Social media is a participatory marketing strategy. You can't force a message. You can't push a message out that will, be, that, that will work well with social media because people have to want to participate. So the question is, is how do you create an environment and how do you create a system that will encourage that? So the best way to begin uh, talking about kind of how, how this can happen is uh, to do a little bit of explaining on what's the difference between Web 1.0 versus Web 2.0. What you're looking at here is a brochure, and um, at some point in your dental career, you probably hired or had somebody come in and take photographs of your staff, and maybe hire or hired an agency to do that and to write copy about your practice. And um, the content for that uh, brochure could be used for other types of marketing, uh, traditional marketing tactics. So. It could be used for direct mail, it could be used for billboards, and eventually a static website. Now why, do I, why am I showing this? The reason why I'm showing this is to help you understand that Web 1.0, which is basically a static website, is very similar, if not almost the same thing as a brochure. It's a, it's a, it's a, shut, it's a moment in time where that was captured and it was prepared properly so that uh, any images, you know, nobody's hair was out of place. Uh, everybody was dressed correctly, smiling. Nobody was had their eyes closed while the, the shutter on the camera went off. The copy is dramatically perfect. It's right. It's just it creates the perfect image for your practice. 
And um, that's basically what a static website is. Now, in early 2000s, um, the uh, geeks out there, okay, geeks like Mark Zuckerberg and some of the other, uh, Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook, and some of the other uh, uh, kind of geek minds started creating websites that weren't static, okay? Um, websites like LinkedIn and Facebook and MySpace and Twitter and Pinterest and Google Plus and all these these sites that are what we consider to be social media sites begin popping up. So what's the difference between a static website and a social site, which is the difference which is the same difference between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0? Web 1.0 is like a brochure. There's no interaction. People don't go to your website to speak with you. They go to your website to get information about your practice, read about you, and then hopefully call in. Web 2.0 is built on an architecture where the site actually has the capability of communicating with other sites. So for example, um, if you use Facebook, you're probably familiar with um, sending friend requests. So in Facebook, when you want to connect with somebody, you send them a friend request. And they can accept that. And once they do accept it, it merges. Actually, the, you know, the, the architecture of the way the sites are built is it will merge your your account, your personal account, with your your new friend's personal account, so that when you type something into your page, they see it in their page. That is the same functionality between basically all social media sites, what is called Web 2.0. This site, these two sites that you're looking at here, are, are examples of the difference between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. So, uh, a dynamic blog site is built on a lot of the architecture of Web 2.0. So I'm going to show you really quick just all the things that um, are a little bit different. So up here in the top right-hand corner, you'll see that there's a subscribe form. So if you put your email into there, it drops its program to drop that email into an email list so that that, that person who put their email in can start receiving newsletters from the practice. Over here in the bottom or the middle left are all the other social media um, plugins. So you've got plugins to Twitter, Facebook, to Google+, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. So you can follow them by just clicking on that. Down here at the bottom, this, this page is actually just a, it's a blog page, and this article, What's the Deal with Mouthwash, was a, was a particular article. This, this is not the front page of their blog site or dynamic site. So um, at the bottom of each one of these uh, articles, there's a comment section where a patient can type something in, and then the practice is notified that, that, that a patient has you know, commented and they can go back and comment as well. Up here in the top right is what we call a Facebook widget. So this is a little window that actually looks into the Facebook page for Hornbrook uh, Center for Dentistry. So you're actually looking at the last post inside their Facebook page. If you were to click that, you could automatically follow their practice. You'd be following them on, on, on Facebook. Uh, here's a, a promotion. So a promotion, and I'll actually go through an example of this a little bit later on, but a promotion, an enter to win promotion, or with this one is an iPad, they're giving away an iPad too. If I were to click on that, it would take me to a page where I could enter to win. I would enter my name and my email and some information. And then this promotion would actually be shared with all of my friends on Facebook. So just to give you an example of the, the the power of that. The average Facebook user has 150 friends about. So if Hornbrook could get 100 of their current patients, just 100 of them, to enter to win this and share it, that means 15,000 people or around 15,000 people would see this promotion because it posts this promotion to all those people's personal page, which is then shared with all of their friends. There's a request and appointment form that gets sent to an email account at the office. So if somebody fills it out, they can call them and set up the appointment. Here are all the uh, some of the other social media sites linked. And then down there in the bottom right is what we call a Twitter feed, which is basically the same thing as the Facebook feed up top. You're, look, you're looking in to a window into their Twitter account to see the last post that they, 
safety place. So there are eight different calls to action here where people can engage, connect, share, and so forth. Whereas with a static website, usually it's just a phone number for a, for a patient or a potential patient to connect. So how is social media done in a dental practice? Well, we see this as a three-legged chair. You need the right person, or in some cases people. You need the right tools, and you need the right mindset, strategies, and ideas. Let's start with the right tools. Here is, um, this was actually created quite a few months ago, and so it's not current and up to date, but here are some of the social media sites online. So when social, or Web 2.0 kind of popped onto the scene, programmers and people all over the place started creating social media sites for people to connect in different ways. Sometimes they're, they're image sharing sites like Pinterest, or, or they might be um, you know, video sharing sites. I mean, there's all sorts of different types of uh, sites here that, that are social media based. So the question is, where, where do you start, right? I mean, this is overwhelming just looking at this page, and this isn't all of them. I'm sure there's hundreds more by now. Well, as we work within the dental industry, we've kind of distilled this down to seven functions, at least right now. And this can change because social media is an ever-evolving process. But right now, what we use here at, at, at our company, My Social Practice, with our clients, are these sites. So we use a blog site, which is a hub, or a dynamic website is what we like to call it. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and email. Now, email is not actually a website, but the way that, um, the way that uh, we've actually built the email system, which anybody could build if they had a programmer, is that it plugs into uh, these social media sites. So it acts as a, a really critical function of the, the campaign. And then over on the right-hand side, we've got Google Plus and Pinterest. Uh, these are two rapidly growing social sites that um, we feel like are important to, to watch and to incorporate into, this, into the campaign. I wouldn't say that, that they're the foundation, but they're definitely useful. So um, we use all of these in a what we call a hub-and-spoke fashion. Okay? And there's two reasons for this, and I'll explain what this means. Your dynamic site, your blog site, we call the hub. This is the transaction or the conversion point. This is where information is initially distributed, or it's not distributed, excuse me. It's put there initially, it's entered there, and then from there it's distributed. Now, the reason that we do this is because you can actually set up your blog, your dynamic site, to speak to your other social media site. If you don't do that, then if you had something that you wanted to tell your followers and you had all of these different social sites set up, you'd have to log into Twitter, post the information, then log out and then log back into Facebook, post the information. If you had an image involved, you could log into Pinterest and load your image up, log out. You could put a newsletter together and send out your newsletter. Then you could go out and update your Google Plus page. And if there was video involved, you could go load it into YouTube. But that's not necessarily how the well, you can do it that way, but it's just a, it's a pain because it takes forever, right? So what we do is we, we build it in a way where we enter the information in once and then we distribute it from there automatically. The second reason that we use this hub and spoke model is because you control your dynamic site. Okay? It's just the same thing that you have if you have your own website. Nobody can take your website away from you. Right? Nobody can go in and make changes to it because you own it. Well, you would own a blog site. And if you run your entire social media campaign from this place, you end up controlling the, the campaign. Whereas if you just ran your social media system through Facebook and that was it, what if Facebook makes a change? Which they actually just did. They've made a couple different changes in the last 90 days that were significant. They moved, um, they moved from the landing page model to the timeline, if you're familiar with Facebook. And that totally changed up how, um, completely changed up how you would market and advertise through Facebook. Because, so 
so anyway, the idea here is, is that you, you run your campaign through something that you can control. Because if you don't control it, you might build a huge following somewhere and then things change and you don't have control. And you've got to look at social media as it's a long-term marketing strategy. This is not like direct mail where you blast out a bunch of pieces and you get all the phone calls in within the next month. Social media should be a lifelong process because what it simply is is just a conversation that you're having with your patients and their friends and so forth. So that's why we use this hub and spoke model. So as we go through this, remember this is kind of the visually, this is how we're structuring the, the, the system. All right, let's talk about the right person. So do you need like a guru in your office, somebody who's some kind of a genius? Yeah, we, we say no, absolutely not. But you do need a few things. Number one, you need somebody with a great attitude. Two, you need someone who loves your patients. Three, you need someone who can focus on social media between 30 to 60 minutes a week. And this is in the beginning. I, I, I recommend that as, you, as the campaign starts to get a lot of traction and you get a lot of followers and you're, you're getting a lot of comments and communication, you should probably put in more time. But you know, at that point, it'll make sense because you're getting a lot of patience from it. So in the beginning, maybe maybe 10 minutes a day, 5 to 10 minutes a day, but as things go on a little bit more, as you see fit. And the last thing is someone who works in your practice. So why would I say that you need to have somebody who works in your practice to manage the campaign? Well, I, I, I mention this because I've probably talked to 30 or 40 dental offices in the past several months who have said that they've, they've called in because they're interested in using our company as a, as a solution to help them manage a social media campaign. And they've talked to other, other, other companies who have offered to run their entire social media campaign, meaning the dental office just writes a check and they don't have to worry about it because this practice is going to post for them. They're going to you know, just manage the whole thing. There's no nothing that practice has to do. Now, that's good and bad. It's good because then you don't have to worry about it, right? But it's bad in that that's really not how social media – well, social media is a conversation between a business or your dental office and your patients. And so do you – the question that always comes to my mind is, do you really want to hire somebody who doesn't know your patients to talk to them? Because that's what they're going to be doing. They're going to be communicating directly with your patients. Now, I'm not saying you can't hire an agency like ourselves or somebody else to help manage it. That's absolutely something that, that can happen and will probably save you a lot of time and a lot of money. But when it comes down to the actual process, at some point after a campaign is set up and you're running a promotion or you've got a Facebook page and you've got 1,500 followers, your patients are going to be asking you questions. You know, Susie's going to ask, hey, I just, my kid just broke a tooth or something like that. Or somebody might say, I need to reschedule my appointment in Facebook rather than calling in because they'll, they'll commu start communicating with you through the social media sites. You don't, you don't want somebody outside of your office talking to your patients. They just don't know them. They don't know how long the patient's been with you. They don't know if this patient owes you money. They don't know if the patient has referred 30 people over in the last year. So we have drawn a line in the sand um, with, with how we manage campaigns where we will take care of basically everything, design, programming, uh, monitoring, all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to the actual conversation between a practice and their patient, that has to be done by somebody in the office. So that's why we say, you need to have somebody who works in your practice. We actually wrote um, a blog article about this a few weeks back um, called Three Reasons Why We Don't and Shouldn't Take Over Your Dental Practice as Social Media Voice. And you can find this article on our blog. Just go to mysocialpractice.com and then you'll click on the, the tab that says Blog Archive and then just find this article. There's a lot of other articles on there that are all related to social media, what it is, how it's done, um, and I think that uh, if you're interested in social media, you should definitely take advantage of that free content that we've put up. So uh, anyway, that's why we, we recommend somebody in your office. 
So what are the benefits? Now, the, uh, the best way for me to explain the benefits um, is to kind of talk about this last leg of the chair, the right mindset strategies and ideas. And I could talk about this for a long time about strategies and tactics and ways to do this or that. And I actually had this presentation designed that way, but it would take about an hour and a half. And so I didn't feel like I wanted to have it take that long. So um, the best way to do this is I'm just going to show you how I'm going I'm to just take a screenshots of clients of ours interacting with their patients through social media sites, through Facebook and, and Twitter and so forth and their blogs. And I'm just going to show you how that works. And I think that from that you'll be able to see, oh, I get it. You know, this is what social media is. I see the value in it. And then um, if you guys have more questions about strategies and tactics, I'm happy to talk to you on the phone or whatnot. But this should answer your questions and give you a really good idea about how this begins to work and the, and the benefits of it. All right, this is um, Dynamic Smile Design. They are uh, a client down in Orlando. And what I've done here is I've basically just taken some screenshots of their of their Facebook wall. So the wall is where you actually enter information in, and uh, then then uh, the people that are following that have clicked the like button will see whatever Dynamic Smile Design has has written on their Facebook page, and they can comment. So the reason I've done this is because they do a really good job of putting up um, content that's different and it changes and uh, it's just kind of dynamic. You, you, you definitely don't want to just post information that's kind of the same one note message all the time. I've seen some Facebook pages where um, there's just article after article after article after article of like education, dental educational um, stuff and there's absolutely no comments. There's no interaction between the practice and their patients. And what you're looking for is you're looking for interaction. If there's no interaction, social media is not working for you. Okay. So here's a, here's some good examples. The first post here is an in-house whitening special. So they just offered had a, a special there. And then the next post is a patient appreciation party. You can see there's some comments from some of their patients. If you go further down the page, there's a couple blog posts at the top there. So these are blog posts that we wrote for them in their blog, and the blog is uh, automatically sending those posts to their Facebook page, kind of like the hub and spoke idea that we explained before. There's a birthday wish. There's a comment with a local interest. Um, check our patient, Jade, on Access Hollywood right now. She's getting a lot of airtime. She's awesome. A promotional call to action. They're giving away an iPad. Further down the page, you've got uh, another blog post. And then they put this on this this image, right, of these, uh, these, this granny cheerleading team, and they wrote some stuff on the, on the picture and then scanned it and loaded it up. So it just is a funny, uh, you know, funny message. Get some interaction. So th those are just, just an idea on what, what do you post. You know, you, you want to post about lots of different things. Here's another client. This is a um, Heinz Little Small Pediatric Dentistry Office. And uh, if you notice on the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little a pink fairy-looking thing. I'm going to show you. I'm gonna, the next slide, you'll be able to see that the, she's got a tooth in her hand. This is uh, one of the things that we, a lot of the comments that we were getting back from our clients was that, you know, because we were encouraging them to, to post interesting, fun stuff on Facebook, but they would say, well, we don't know where to start. We don't know what to post. You know, when I get up in the morning, what do I do? So what we decided to do to kind of help out to prime the pump, so to speak, is we send out either a video or an image or a quiz or something interesting every day to the practices, and what they do is they take that and they post it with some comments from themselves. So we made this little image of this fairy, this tooth fairy, and um, found some information about how much people were paying for, you know, how much the tooth fairy was paying. Uh, back in 1900 and then 1998 and then nowadays. And so they, we gave that to them and they said, hey, they posted the picture with some comments and then asked their patients, how much do you, does your tooth fairy pay out to your kids? And down the page further you get all these comments. So you'll see that there are 
11 comments responding to that question. And there's nothing in there that's really like anybody saying, hey, I want to come in and get some work done, but which wasn't the intention of posting that in the first place. But what you see is you see that there are there's interaction, right? There's it, there's this creates top of mind awareness. It creates a better relationship between the dental office and the and the and their patients. And so it's just it's just a way to begin interacting. So you see you see that you try and find information that's interesting and fun to share. Here's another uh, shot. This is actually still from Heinz Little Smiles. This is a message chain that, that um, came through, and I want to read through this because I think this is a, this is pretty important. This is a direct relationship to revenue in the office. So Sarah says, "Hi, I've called your office a few times today to schedule a consultation for my daughter, but have been unable to speak with a live person. Your office came with excellent recommendation from my friend Lisa Rager. How do I speak with a live person to schedule an appointment?" And she gave her phone number, and then Heinz responds. Hi, Sarah. I'm sorry for that. I'm unsure of why you were not able to speak with somebody. I will have someone give you a call shortly. Thanks for sending us a message. I will look into this uh, further. Tell Lisa hello. She's fabulous. We look forward to seeing you soon. And Sarah says, thank you. Your office called me first thing this morning. Looking forward to the consultation next week. Thanks. Well, there's two issues here that I see. Number one, she's using Facebook to communicate with the practice. Okay, so your patients, if, uh, depending on the study that you look at, your patients are using about 72 to 93 percent of your patients are using Facebook, and they spend an average of over seven hours a week on Facebook. So they're there, they're communicating, they want to communicate this way. So Sarah takes advantage of the opportunity to talk to Heinz Little Smiles when she has a question. Second issue is is now you why is Who's answering the phone? I mean, what, there's something wrong here. Obviously, the girls, Sarah's got the wrong phone number, which means the wrong phone number might be being distributed somewhere online. Who knows? Or the front desk is overwhelmed. And so this is feedback to the office manager and the doctor that there's possibly a glitch in the system, right? So just uh, some good information there. All right, here's another uh, another practice, art dentistry. They posted this image of this, this gentleman. Our fabulous patient, Addison, had a small makeover for his wedding in October. Check back before pictures. He looks awesome. So a little bit later, they post the before picture of this, this guy. And there's a chain of comments here below. So I'm going to read. Karen says, where's the after? Our dentistry should be loading as we speak. Karen did not realize you did our orthodonture. Karen, by the way, see you tomorrow at 4.30. So... Obviously, Karen's a patient, and she's got an appointment. And then Art Dentistry says, we don't do orthodontics. Dr. Martin did some bonding in this case. He does amazing work. Karen, I need to send my 23-year-old son to you. I will ask questions tomorrow. So here's a great example of a patient, a current patient who has an actual appointment who doesn't know that the office performs other types of services. And um, this picture just this random picture of their patient spurs a conversation that um, can lead to more work, right? So this is a direct correlation to creating more revenue that comes in the office. And I see this type of conversation all the time with, uh, with practices. So uh, there's absolutely no doubt that, that it, um, social media can create more revenue. Here's the after picture that they posted just a little while later after that. And then Nate chimes in. Nate, awesome work. Not surprised, though, so he's probably a patient. Our dentistry. Thanks, Nate. Ashley, they look great. A new smile is like changing. Uh, and then our dentistry. Thanks, Ashley. We're so glad you liked your new smile. You look great. So two, two patients who give some props to the office, basically saying, hey, you guys do great work. Um, so just a little bit more validation for the office. Here's another... Uh, Facebook post. This is Dr. Gemi. He was at a uh, or um, Invisalign summit for orthodontists in Vegas, and he had somebody take this picture of him with their phone and post it right, right to Facebook, right while he's there, just out in the spur of the moment. And I've blown up this the comments right below so we can read them to to show you 
just on the spur of the moment, if you're if you are uh, communicating and letting people know about what you're doing, that it will continue to validate you as a as a doctor in an office. So Gail says, the great thing about this group is that they're constantly keeping up with new procedures and ideas to treat their patients. The office staff at the Welsh Road location is incredible. Dealing with them made it easy to correct my children's issues and their teeth look great. Keep up the good work. And Barbara chimes in. And they also make it easy and very comfortable for us grown-ups. Two, getting braces as an adult has changed my life. So if a, if a potential patient, uh, and most of your potential patients, are going to go look at your Facebook page before they um, decide to come into the office, if they come to this page and they see this type of interaction where it's not the office talking about themselves, it's their patient talking about the office, uh, it just it creates a lot of validation. And um, you just you can't pay people to, to speak about you like this. So if you give them the opportunity to do so, they will. Uh, and that's what social media is about. It's about getting your current patients and their friends and their family to talk about you, to validate and to create um, awareness about your practice and encourage people to come to your office. All right, this is, um, so I mentioned earlier I'd talk about promotions. This is actually, I didn't get a chance to change the slide. This is the old look of Facebook. Uh, they just changed it just a few weeks ago to the timeline look. The functionality is exactly the same. Promotions are run exactly the same. Just looks a little bit different on the new page. But if you'll notice, um, right in the middle of this page, there's an enter to win an iPad 2, and then he had a Facebook exclusive offer. We usually, we encourage our practices to run a, um, a, a two offers. Well, a promotion and an offer. A promotion is like an enter to win type of a promotion, and then a new patient offer. So if you were to click on this enter to win an iPad 2, it would take you to this page. Now this is his dynamic site. This is his blog site. And the reason that we have the actual form where you enter to win on, on his blog is because you're not allowed to run promotions inside Facebook. Uh, it's against their rules and regulations. So we link the promotion to their blog. right? And if you were to scroll down this page, right below this image, you'd see this chain of um, steps to enter to win. So the first one is you got to like the office on Facebook. We call that a gated offer, meaning there's no way to participate unless you actually liked the practice. And let me just explain really quick, a little bit of a tangent, but let me make sure you understand exactly what a like means. Earlier I talked about um, merging Facebook accounts. So if you send a friend request from your personal Facebook account to your friend and they accept it, it merges those two accounts together. This is the exact same process with a business page like this. Because this is not a, we're not looking at Dr. Eshen's personal account. We're looking at his business page. Okay? When you set up a business page, you don't send a friend request to get people to follow you. You just got to get them to click the like button. So if I were to click this like button, it would merge my personal account with Dr. Esham's business page so that every time he posts something, I see it in my account. Right? So after you get 1,000 or 2,000 people that are following you on Facebook, it can become an extremely powerful form of marketing. And uh, I, I wouldn't even say 1,000. I mean, even 250 to 500 people following you becomes really, really uh, uh, it's kind of where the rubber meets the road. It's very powerful. You can you can get a lot of traction from it. So uh, anyway, so the first thing is you want to click the like button. He's only got 159 likes, but he just had barely started uh, marketing, so that's why he didn't have as many. Then you enter your name, your email, your phone number, uh, your zip code, and then down here, steps six and seven, which I've circled, are are important. One is to subscribe to the monthly newsletter. It's an optional. Uh, an optional subscription. And then step seven, it says, agree to recommend this promotion to your Facebook wall for two additional entries. So what that's saying is, hey, if you would like, we'll give you a two additional entries into the, into the promotion if you are willing to post this image to your own personal Facebook page, which means that that, 
person is basically sharing it with all of their friends. So I've got 480 friends or something like that on Facebook. And I'd say probably 70, maybe 80% of them are local. So if, if Desh, Desham was, was a local dentist and I was entering to win in my local area, he'd, be, he'd probably be reaching 350 people or so that uh, are potential patients. So, And it's all programmed. All, all that has to happen is I would just click that little button, hit submit, and it's done. The patient isn't required to do anything else. It just shares it. Right? So that's a way you can begin to incentivize your current patients to basically talk about you. Right? All right, let's move on. Here, here's another example of Facebook um, Kickstart post ideas. I mentioned that we send something out every day to kind of help prime the pump. We found, Blake, our designer, actually found this um, old like high dental hygienist magazine and all these funny pictures of these old hygienist uniforms are in it. So he pulled those out, created a little Brady Bunch layout and numbered them. And then we sent this out. And a lot of the practices said vote for your favorite or whatever, but this practice, Champagne Family Dentistry, said we're looking to update our assistant and hygienist uniforms. Vote for your favorite. And I'm, I took a screenshot of the comments below. So Anne Jeanette down here says, LOL, do you mean to go retro? I'll go with eight. Ruby says, wow, I don't like any of them. Sorry, they look too formal. You guys are all too welcoming and relaxed to pull those off. We don't want to feel sterile. I like the casual but professional look you have now. How about scrub tops? They can be fun. So she actually thinks they're serious. So they got a whole bunch of comments, and this the comment chain went forever. In the middle of the page down, down there, Champagne says, we're just joking. They were teasing and whatnot. But this amount of you know communication is the type of um, is the type of relationship that you want to have with your patients through social media. You want them constantly, you know, commenting and talking about you because it it, it helps to support top of mind awareness and the validation that that you have a, um, that your brand is working and it's, it's communicating with your patients and so forth. Before I started working within the dental industry, I regularly go to the dentist, and I am honest. I'm, I'm dead honest about this. I do not. I did not remember my dentist's name. So if I were to go and have a conversation with somebody, and dental work came up, and I can think of a few times that it did, I, I wouldn't even know how to refer somebody to the office because I couldn't even remember their name. Obviously, now that I'm in dental, I. In, in the industry and whatnot, I, I get it, and I, I definitely remember my dentist's name now. But you have to realize that people probably don't give it a second thought. And so this creates an opportunity to uh, reassure and revalidate and help people create this top-of-mind awareness so that communications and uh, dialogues that that person has outside of you know, outside of the internet, but just with their friends and family will help to create more referrals. The other thing is I want to show you this is I've circled 736 people or the number of people that are following Champagne Family Dentistry. And if you look up top here, it says 730 people reached. So this particular comment, this post, reached 730 people. That's how many people saw it. So it's a, it's a, it was a very successful post, basically. Um, here's another uh, Facebook page. Uh, this is kind of funny. We kind of cut it out and blew it up a little bit so that you could read it. It says, thank you, Nina. We truly do anything for patients. Nina says, I was on Facebook, saw that Dr. Neil Kravitz was on, so I poked him and told him that I had just broken my tooth on a milk dud. I thought it was funny, and he'd get a good laugh out of it. Like 10 minutes later, he called me to make sure that I wasn't in pain. OMG, I love that man. I'm sure he would have met me in his office if I was in pain. He is cool. He did that once for Jillian. So obviously another patient that's talking about how awesome this doctor is. He came from an hour away just to fix a loose wire or something that was causing her a great deal of pain. Seriously, if you don't have an orthodontist and you need one, he is the man. So just another, another great comment. Just think of if, 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 if somebody were to come to this page and begin reading some of these comments about the practice that um, 
that uh, they would they would be probably reconvinced to go in and start working with the practice. All right, I'm gonna get off Facebook for a while. This is this is a blog. So blogs are incredibly important to create communication and validation for your practice. Uh, this is a, an article that we actually wrote for the practice called Thoughts on Oral Piercings in Your Oral Health. So this is this is the actual blog page. I'm gonna take a screenshot of the bottom half of it so you can see the the image. And then below this image and the article, there's the comment section. And so this is all on one page. I've shown you three consecutive pages or three three slides here that, that go down the page. And here is uh, just a, you know a, um, some comments from people who are following this particular dentist. The first lady says, it's an interesting sign of the times that you are pushing or publishing a blog on this topic. I do thank you for caring about our young people and for keeping us honestly informed. And this gentleman says, good article. I, was, I always wondered what a dentist would say to somebody with oral piercings. I hope in future posts you'll attack smoking and chewing tobacco. Nathan, the doctor, actually replies and says, Kim, I am glad you found the article informative. We will definitely address the topic of smoking and chewing tobacco in the future. And then this lady says, thank you so much for your article on lip and tongue piercing. I have two grandchildren in their teens and worry so much when I see their friends with mouth and nose piercing. Nagging is about the same as hearing it from a dentist. I will let my grandkids read this article. Nathan says, great, Julie. We're glad you enjoyed the article. would love for you to pass on the information. So the way that this is the model, that the actually the way that this is set up, is this conversation can go on and on and on, where the patients can reply and then the doctor can reply, and sometimes you'll see just a litany of of communication in here of people talking to the doctor. So it's just a way that the doctor can can uh, create valuable content and information to their patients, and their patients comment on it. Uh, this is a Twitter page. Madeline Zavantis is um, really likes Twitter. She uses it often and uses it in, and has a good following of people. And uh, I'll just show you a little bit about how Twitter can be used. Doctors that use Twitter, um, I mean, they get patients from it. And so, if and we have a lot of training on it. So if it's something that you can spend a few minutes a day on, uh, it can be really helpful. Here are uh, two posts. So. The bottom post says, finishing up patient care, then off to digital dentistry symposium in Atlantic City. High hopes for a great CERAC conference. And you notice that's on the 23rd of February. And then on the 27th, so four days later, Madeline says, oops, forgot to give thanks to Patterson Dental for a great CERAC conference this weekend in Atlantic City. Good job. Now, she's posting that because Patterson's following her. She's connected in her Twitter account to people in the, in the, in the industry. Okay, not only her patients, but other other offices, you know, consulting groups, Patterson Dental, so forth, so on and so forth. So it's it's not just communication with your patients; it can be communication with, you know, businesses and, and whatnot. If you're in orthodontics, um, this is a great way to communicate with all the general dentistry offices in your area, which is a way that most orthodontists get, get a lot of their patients. So, great Twitter example. YouTube is um, for video, which most of you know. And the reason why you want to create a YouTube channel, there's, there's a couple reasons for it. First of all, a channel is just that. It's a channel with no other advertising on the page outside of what you put there. So um, it's a place where people can go to just get information about you. And people can subscribe to the channel just like they would click the like button on Facebook, and every time you load up information, they would get a, an email that would basically say, hey, uh, so-and-so just loaded up another video, and they can click on the email and watch the video. So, so it's a good, if you get a following uh, in YouTube, on your YouTube channel, you're basically distributing media content. Now, I, um, I think that YouTube is best used as an educational outlet so if you're creating educational videos, um, you can start uploading those as often as you create them. And that's a great way to um, communicate with patients or potential patients. The second thing is, is YouTube is um, the most flexible video player out there. It's just enormously huge. And you can play videos from YouTube anywhere you want. They can be embedded into an email. 
they you can play them on any type of a website. There's no extra like funky coding or weird stuff. Okay, and there are some players out there that require a programmer to get in and and actually coordinate the website with the the video, and, and it gets kind of complicated. Whereas YouTube, you just grab the link, you know, the the address up top, the address bar, just copy that, and you post it anywhere, and it'll post. So it's the, it's the simplest way to distribute content as well. And so uh, a YouTube channel is important to begin archiving all your media content, training videos, testimonials, um, patient appreciation parties, whatever, whatever you guys do, um, create videos and start loading them up. You never know when you're going to need the video. We have quite a few practices that when they do the promotions and they give away the promotion, they actually videotape giving away the promotion. And then they post it to their blog, which then distributes that that giveaway to everybody that's following them. So YouTube channels are important. Creating video is important. It's really easy. You can create it on an iPhone, on an iPad, you can do a little flip camera. I mean it's, everybody's got video, something to record video somewhere. And it doesn't have to be professionally done. It has it doesn't have to look like you know, you're you're a million dollar production facility. Just start recording it. Uh, people appreciate the spontaneity of um, recording video on phones and so forth. Seth Godin is probably one of the top three leading marketing minds in the world. And he said, you can no longer market to the anonymous masses. They're not anonymous, and they're not masses. You can only market to people who are willing participants, okay, which is basically what social media is. Now I want to just take a minute before we go into a Q&A and I want to talk about what we do as a company because as I've described a lot of this, I've mentioned a few times kind of how we set things up. So there may be some of you, some of you on the call that are interested in actually working with our company and I obviously want to take that opportunity to make an offer. So um, let me show you what we do really quick and let me go over pricing and some other things. Um, first of all, we build and design four sites. We build a blog, or a dynamic site, which is basically like a website, but it has the capability to speak to all these social media sites, right? We create a Facebook page, which uh, there are some design elements in there, and we also plug in appointment request forms and promotions and new patient offers so that there's some interaction and opportunity to generate business through it. Uh, we create a YouTube channel, which I just kind of went over, and then a Twitter account. So I'm going to just show you a few of these, uh, just one by one. Um, this is uh, the same slide I showed before of Hornbrook's um, blog or dynamic site with all the different uh, functionality and uh, programming that's uh, inter interaction points for patients to, to communicate. This is Heinz Little Smile's Facebook page. This is a this is the new layout. This is the timeline layout. So this big cover image at the top that says "Welcome to Heinz Little Smiles." and then the images of the two doctors there. That's designed. And then down in the bottom left-hand corner of that image is their, is their logo. Uh, so we plug all that in. And then directly below that, there are four buttons. There's the photos, request an appointment, promotions, and blog button. And all those are built, programmed, and plugged into there. Here's uh, Madeline Savantis' tw Twitter page. And with Twitter, there's there's the left-hand side where all that's designed, and it's designed to look like all of our other stuff. So we're using the same elements, same color template, and so forth, so they're to coordinate as you link through and so forth to the different social sites. They all look the same. And then again, here's uh, Stephen Brown's YouTube channel. Same thing. They all look similar to all of his other um, social sites. Now this is um, this is an example of the email. The email is not a site, but it is logged in. So if you look at this, the top image was designed and created by us. And then down below you've got the iPad offer, because we're advertising this iPad offer across all the platforms. She has office materials that, that talk about this. She has this promoted on her blog and her YouTube or her uh, excuse me, her Facebook page and so forth. To the left of that you've got the titles of the um, the actual articles that were posted. So these get all the blog articles get pulled in to the email and then distributed. So that's important because she may have 2,000 emails, right, of her current patients, but maybe only have 
250 people following her on Facebook. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to distribute the content at, to everybody, right? And sometimes you have more followers on Facebook than you have on Twitter, and some of the followers on Twitter aren't following her on her blog or on her newsletter, uh, or vice versa. So we're, we're distributing the content out to everybody. Google Plus literally yesterday just came out with a header image that you can design. Uh, this, isn't, um, this isn't the look of the new Google Plus page. This is the old look. This is two days ago and beyond. But a lot like Facebook, we have that big cover image at the top. Google Plus has just come out with that. And so we may at some point be, be actually designing that for, um, for the practices. At this point we have, and we've just done training on Google Plus because there hasn't been any design elements. So we, we have a lot of great training on how to use Google Plus and what it is and how it works. And then Pinterest. Pinterest doesn't have any designing elements. Um, so we do a lot of training on it. We've created an ebook about how to use Pinterest. We've got several articles about how to use Pinterest within the dental industry to drive traffic to your, to your website or your Facebook page and so forth. Okay. So all in all, basically what we provide as a service is we're building all the de we're designing and programming all the social sites, which are kind of in the center there. And then stop starting in the top left hand corner, we've got a monthly HTML newsletter. We have in-office print materials. These correlate and correspond to the promotions and offers that will be running online so that what you're doing in the office, what you're handing out in the office is what's online. Okay, so it's all one message. And you don't even have to print those. We print them for you. We just mail you a box and you just hand them out. So there's, n there's no work on your end in terms of developing and designing all that stuff. That stuff. The engaging content, um, that is the blog articles. We encourage the doctors to write their own blog content, and we actually have a system designed that's very, very simple, where a couple, with a couple clicks and answering a few questions, the doctors can actually begin producing their own blog content. But we also write uh, blog content for the doctors as well, where you don't have to worry about it, and it's general dentistry type content and orthodontic type content. And then over on the right-hand side, we have, which is, I think is our strength, um, is definitely our strength, which is all of our training. Everything that we do is dental-related, and so it's hyper-sensitive to the industry, and um, it's kind of tweaked so that anything that you're looking at is relative to your business. We have phone support, email support. We have articles coming out once a week to every two weeks that are that are uh, about new social media uh, trends and so forth, or new sites and whatnot that might be out there on the on the market. The only thing I didn't include on this uh, slide are the uh, are the daily Kickstart posts ideas, which um, I've kind of shown you, like the one of the, the the dental hygienist uniforms. Those come out every day, Monday through Friday. So that's what we offer. Now um, we charge. $1,495 to do all the design and build of all those sites. And um, we charge $299 a month to manage the campaign. That's the blog writing, the emailing, and the in-office materials, and the promotions and offers, and so forth. All of that is on a monthly, uh, just a monthly fee of $299 a month. What I'd like to offer today is $500 off the setup fee for anybody who would like to get started uh, working with our company. So you'd only have to pay $995 for us to build everything. And then um, you would then begin paying. We'd have everything built within 30 days, and then you begin paying $299 a month for the maintenance of it. The only caveat to this is with that type of a discount, I would need for you to stick with us for at least six months. So we'd, we need at least a six-month contract to make, make it make sense. So uh, all you need to do is go ahead and email um, info at mysocialpractice.com. The subject line is uh, just put in social media webinar, or you can call Seth, which is one of the partners here at this number, and he'll be happy to answer any questions that you've got. But I'll, I'll offer this to um, anybody that would like to get started that's on the call today. So what I'd like to do now is let's take some questions. And I've got quite a few questions here, so I'm going to go through as many as I, I possibly can in about 10 minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll be done. And if you have um, more questions beyond that, 
you can just go ahead and give us a call at this number or the phone number on our website. All right, so the first question I'm looking at here, and there's quite a few of them, so I may not get to all of them. Um, are you going to have this webinar online? Yes, I will. I'm going to record this, and it's going to be posted online uh, as a blog post here probably within the next few days. So, so you'll be able to, to read that or listen to it again or have somebody else listen to it. What I would recommend is that you like us on Facebook because uh, we'll post it on Facebook, and that way you'll know when we post it. Or you can on our website, mysocialpractice.com, just enter your email into the subscribe button. And what you'll do is you'll end up getting not only this webinar, but you'll get all the content that we start producing that's our public content. Um, we do produce quite a bit of content that's private just for our clients, but the amount of um, training that we provide on a public end is by far more than I think anybody out there produces uh, relative to so social media. So, yeah, I will. Um, okay, next question. Do we need to set up the blog on our site? So what you're asking there is the dynamic site that we're building is um, the dynamic site that we're building is is it on the website? So if your website is abcdental.com, do we put the blog on the site like at abcdental.com forward slash blog? I think it's what you're asking. The answer is no. We don't want to put the blog on the website for a few different reasons. One, we can link it. I mean, there can be a link on your website that links through to it, but we don't want it to be on the same URL because then we run into programming problems. The dynamic site is built on a totally different model, right? It's, it's the programming is different. The, the actual language is different than a static site. So you run into some problems there. But the other thing is, is when you get into um, really, you know, being found online, you, you want to have more content distributed on different websites as much as you possibly can. You want to build links. I get, this gets into search engine optimization, but, but, but basically if there is a link to your website on another person's website, it counts as what's called an inbound link. And uh, links, I mean, we could have a huge discussion about links. But uh, basically by having a blog that's not on your website that has links to your website, it strengthens your, the, your, your link, linking um, and your SEO for your website and vice versa. So we put it on a separate site so we would get a new URL. So if it's abcdental.com, maybe we would get uh, aaadental.com right, or whatever it might be, and you have a new hosting account. Hosting costs about seven or eight dollars a month. It's not not expensive, and what it is is you're basically renting um, server space on somebody's computer, uh, a business computer somewhere. So GoDaddy is a hosting company. Bluehost is a hosting company. So when somebody goes to your website, basically what hosting means is that they're looking at information that's hosted on GoDaddy site or a Bluehost. Or not site hosted on their their computers. You do that because they they create some security and um, uh, things don't go down and and whatnot. So you're paying a company to make sure your website stays online. So that's why we put it on a different site and we do get a new URL, new domain name, and so forth. All right. So do you do exclusivity? Uh, this is a question I get a lot from from dental offices. Um, concerned about us working with two offices that might be too close to each other. Now, I completely, totally understand why this is an issue because traditional marketing is hyper-competitive and it's geographically um, targeted. So, for example, if you're advertising through print mail, right, and you're sending out 10,000 um, pieces, you send them out to a particular zip code or whatever it might be, and that's direct competition between other practices that are offering the same thing. I, I, I open the, I think it's called the money mailer or something like that. I'm in, I'm in Salt Lake. And I might see four offers for different dental offices or more sometimes. I mean, it's, it's really competitive. And so what happens is that at that level, you're really just competing on who's got the best deal, you know, and there's really no other value that's being presented to the potential patient. 
is looking at the, the piece. Um, same thing with, you know, you know, television and radio advertising. It's all kind of traditionally marketed. When it comes to social media, that's we're looking at it in a completely different way. You're you're not marketing to a geographical area. You're marketing to your current patients. Okay? You're trying to get your current patients to talk about you so that you generate a referral, right? Now, if you have Office A, who's literally a quarter of a mile away from Office B, and they're both doing social media, is there going to be crossover? Yeah, there's probably going to be some crossover, and it'll come in the form of uh, Dental Office A has a patient who has a Facebook account, and one of their friends, uh, friend uh, Julie, we'll call her, right, uh, receives marketing messages from the patient of the dental office A because she might be talking about that particular office or sharing promotions or whatever it might be. Now, Julie also has another friend who is following office B and another the one that's a quarter of a mile away. And so Julie is getting messages through her other friend who's at a different office. So you can see that there might be some crossover through the connections that your current patients have. They may have a connection uh, who has a connection to another office. So that can happen. The, 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 the amount of that happening is infinitesimally smaller than traditional marketing. So I have, you know, we have practices that are close to each other. And I've never had, at least I haven't had any comments or reply or communication with any of the offices that we've worked with that has ever been a problem. Because I would say probably the vast majority of all the marketing is, is, is not crossover. It's not competing with another office. Really, um, that, that line of communication where you have your patient uh, referring and talking about your office to, say, Julie, is just one piece of the power of social media marketing. Um, it's not just about getting a new patient, okay? That's important. Obviously, it's important. And, and uh, you wouldn't do it unless that happened. But the other benefits of social media marketing can even outweigh that, which is better retention, right? You retain your clients, so you have less attrition every year because they want to come back or they're reminded to come back because there's some top wide of mind awareness. Um, repeat business. So instead of patients coming in every nine to ten months for a cleaning, uh, you're communicating with them, and that line of communication is open, and they're reminded to come in every six months. So you're seeing them more often. Social media builds trust, and it absolutely will increase a patient's spend. So there's that po portion uh, benefit of it. So there's other, and there's some other, other issues and benefits to social media, but but the reality of it is, is that just getting a new patient is one one part. I don't want to like make that seem like it's less valuable because it's horribly valuable. But but overall, it's just one piece of the pie. So um, we don't create exclusivity, and uh, even if we attempted to, how can you stop some other office that's across the street from using Facebook? You just can't. So um, what we like to do is we like to make sure that um, if we work with two offices that are close by, we are never writing the same content, we're never writing the same promotions, uh, the look and the feel of, of what we do may be a little bit different. And so we're, it, it's exclusivity more on kind of design and content rather than exclusivity geographically because you're competing with your, uh, you're competing at a different uh, point. So hopefully that handles the exclusivity issue. Um, okay, let me look through here. Let's see. So do we write all the blogger? Okay, so there's a question about us. Where is the blog content coming from? We have two ways to create blog content. And I didn't actually have any slides in here about our blogging tool and so forth, but I'll, I'll um, have to do that another time. We we actually we just created a blog article about our blogging tool like this past weekend. So 
you might see this article, but basically what it is is um, we write an article every week and we post it for you. When we start working with a client, we, we get a list of the services that you provide and we write content according to those services. So every week you're getting a blog article posted. Um, whether you want, you know, I mean it just happens. So you don't have to worry about it. The other way that we create content is we want to create content that is specific to the office. Right? So we, if you guys are going to have a party at the end of the month or next month, or if the doctor is donating some time to handicapped children or the Boys and Girls Club in your community or whatnot. You want to write about these things. You want to let your patients know that you're a community-driven um, type of a practice, that you are uh, not just in it for the money, but you're in it to help and educate and so forth. And you should write about these things. And the, and the best way to do this is to write a blog article and push it out. The, uh, the, the problem is that I know that 99.9% .9 of the offices out there are so busy that they don't have time to write the article. So what we've done is we've built a tool that uh, uh, basically helps to distribute this content. And uh, it, it, let me just kind of just like walk through it in, in, in your mind just how it works. So you can receive a, an email uh, a, with a link or you would be reminded to click on this particular link to write an article. You click on the link and it goes to a page and there are different sections. One section might be to write about specials. Uh, one section might be um, community. One section might be technical or whatever. We've just we've, we're actually building these out as we speak. So different sections. And so if you want to, if you have a, a special that you want to run, you would click on the special section. And then there's several um, sections underneath that special section to talk about what the special might be. Are you running a promotion? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And if you click on that. And it has a, a, a set of questions that it just asks, um, you know, what what this special is about, and all you need to do is answer these. And then what happens is that content is then just posted to your blog as a question and answer type of an article. So the title is chosen, we put that in, and then we ask a question. Um, so Dr. So and So is excited about running this new special. Tell us about blah 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 blah. And then the doctor has has answered that information and it just posts it, right? It just, it just takes that information and posts it like it's a Q&A. And it works really, really, really well. Very simple. It takes only a few minutes. So there's no reason why if you're an orthodontist and you want technical types of content or if you're an oral surgeon and you want technical types of content beyond what we're already creating for you, beyond the, the, types of the, the general kind of type of dentistry content we're creating for you, this creates a way for you to just do it very, very simply. You write one article a month, it will literally take you five minutes, maybe two articles a month, ten minutes, and you're distributing content to all of this, these people that are following you. It's going to go out to, you know, just going back to the hub and spoke idea, it goes out to everybody on your newsletter, on your, your email list, right? Thousands of people that you may have on your email list. Everybody following you on Facebook, everybody on Twitter. I mean, it's just every, it's everybody that's following you on the newsletter that's, that's subscribed to your newsletter. So really, really easy way to generate blog content. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, so we're creating it, and we're encouraging you to create it as well. Um, it's, a, it's really important to, that your patients see that you're interested in them by creating personal content rather than just the stuff that we're, we're creating. Because it doesn't, we're not writing the content that we create like it's, you know, it's not in first person, right? We're not writing it like we're, we're, we're talking about the office, we're talking about things like that, but it's not spoken from the mouth of the doctor, which is important. Okay, um, let me look through the rest. I'll take one more question here. Um, let's see. All right, here, here's, here's a good question. So how many likes do you need on Facebook to start getting new patients? Good question. Um, uh, you can have 10 likes on Facebook and start getting new patients. I mean, literally, you need somebody. You have to have at least one, right? <laughs> what I've seen is that, I mean, let me back up. There was a, there was a study done by a third-party organization. I can't remember the name of the organization, but this has been about six months ago. And they went into like, 
I think it was like a couple, two, three hundred, or maybe even more than a thousand dental offices to, just to see how many likes each practice had. And the average practice that even had a Facebook page, because a lot of them didn't, had less than a hundred likes. And um, I think it was like 80, 86 likes or something like that was the average. So that that's just not enough to really start gaining some momentum. All right, people can get less than 100 likes without doing anything. So uh, what I've seen is that as soon as you start getting up around two, 300 likes, you start to see some real community. You start to see an interaction because you've got enough people following you that, that you know, patient A says something one day and then patient E says something the next. And, and so you, you want to really shoot for two, 300 likes. Um, I will tell you that, you know, if, if you – stick with this and you will, you know, let us educate you and you'll get behind it. Um, you know, as soon as you get maybe 1,500 likes to 2,000 likes, you'll get a lot of patience from it. There are some of our practices that have, that have sent messages telling us that they know they're getting more than 20, 30 patients, 40 patients a month just through Facebook because they track it. So, um, the, the, and the cost to run it is just so small. I mean, what would you pay to get 30 patients a month? I mean, the ADA said that, uh, this is a study that was done a little while ago, but it said the average patient's worth $750 a year to a, to a dental office. I mean, what would you pay to get 30 patients a month? Tens of thousands of dollars? I mean, social media doesn't cost that much money, but it does require a little bit of time and attention. So you should shoot for two, 300, but, but the more the better. One of the things that we do when we work with our practices right when we get started is we, um, yeah, you know, we set up all these promotions and new patient offers and everything's programmed. It looks awesome. It looks great. But then we sit down, well, on the phone, we sit down with the practice and say, look, one of the best ways to get this going is for, uh, this will be a conversation with the doctor or the office manager, is for you guys to run a promotion with your own staff, Right. I know some, I've talked to some practices and they've got three or four staff members and each one of those staff members are Facebook fanatics and they may have five, six, seven hundred people following that person on Facebook. So your own staff could be the first place to start. So what we, what we, what we would do is, hey, look, you know, what, what does your staff like to do? Do you like to take them out to dinner? Do they want to go on a little vacation? Do you want to do this or that or whatever? Why don't you put together a little promotion where as soon as you guys hit 500 likes or 1,000 likes um, that you'll throw a, a party or something like that. And what this does is this helps the staff to get excited about what's going on and to begin talking to their own friends on Facebook about the office. So let's say you're going to do the iPad giveaway, right? That's just a couple of examples in this webinar about that. Well, tell your staff members to start telling their own friends on Facebook that you guys are giving away an iPad, that they need to, you know, they get, need to get involved. Some of these people might be patients. Some of them may not, okay? And it doesn't really matter if they are your patients. You want your patients to be following on Facebook. One of the, well, actually, one of the other questions I skipped over was, aren't just the people following you on Facebook your own patients? Well, yeah, that's the whole point. You want your own patients to follow you on Facebook because it's not your patients that you're necessarily targeting. You're targeting their friends, right? So um, you're getting your staff behind you. You're getting them behind the, the campaign and so forth. And the, the practices that actually do this, they could get to 1,000 likes real quick. We've had some practices get 1,500 likes in three months, you know, and, and start seeing a lot of new patients from it because they're, you know, actually using it. So Hopefully that gives you some kind of a, an idea about where you want to go. But you want to, you want to shoot for 250 and then 500 and then 750. But you should want you should want to get 80 to 90 percent of your current patients following you on Facebook because that's about how many of them are on Facebook. So that's what you want to shoot for. So if you look at your patient database and you've got 2,500 active patients or 1,000 active patients or whatever it might be, shoot for about 80 to 90 percent of those people following you on Facebook. That's what you want to do. Yeah, that's a good good goal. So those are, those are the questions I'm going to take today. Um, you're welcome to give us a call at the numbers. Again, I'll, I'll just mention it again. Um, anybody that wants to get started, I 
uh, we would love to work with you. I think you'll be extremely happy with our service. We have, I, we have a lot of practices that just absolutely love us, and we don't have many people quit. So, uh, if you uh, if you've enjoyed what we've what we've talked about today, I'd encourage you to, to take a step further to possibly work with us. And like I mentioned before, we'll give you a $500 discount for listening in on the setup fee. So all you have to come up with is 995 bucks, and all of that's built for you. I have some practices that don't have websites or have old websites. And buy our service and basically use our dynamic site as their website, right? And, uh, I mean, if you were to go out and build a website, now a decent-looking website, you'd spend a couple thousand dollars. So if, if you're even looking to update your website, you might even want to just uh, – get our service because you get everything else and it's going to cost you less. So anyway, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, have a great weekend and um, good luck. Thanks.